Good evening, boys and girls. Tonight's lesson is lesson 2.6. It's called Multiply Using Expanded Form. Our essential question for tonight is, how can you use expanded form to multiply a multi-digit number by a one-digit number? Boys and girls, I would like you to make sure that you write down this essential question down at the top of page 33 in your Go Math book. Go ahead and do this now. Now, number one in your Go Math book is already done for you. We're going to look at number two. Number two says eight times 43. So we have a one-digit number times a two-digit number. So we've been learning about how to use the distributive property to multiply with multi-digit numbers. So today we're going to be doing the same thing, but we're going to be doing a box model that looks a little bit different, and we might be getting into larger numbers when we multiply. So let's go ahead and start. 8 times 43. Well, I know that this 43 is actually a 40 plus 3 because I break apart the 43 into place values. Now, I need to multi multiply each place value times the 8. And I'm going to draw my box model first for it. So here's what my box model is going to look like. I'm going to draw a large rectangle and I'm going to break apart the rectangle so that I can place my place values inside. So I'm going to break it up. This is going to be for the 40, and I'm going to place my 40 up top, and this is for my 3. So it's the same thing as our base 10 blocks or our array, but it's just using rectangles and boxes. Now, I'm going to multiply the 40 and the 3 times the 8, correct? So my 8 goes down the side. Now, I have my box model all ready and set up to multiply and place partial products inside. So let's go ahead and multiply. I know that I'm going to multiply the 8 times the 40 first, so we're going to write that down using expanded form. 8 times 40. Now I'm going to add another multiplication problem to that, which is the 8 times the 3. So 8 times 3. Let's multiply 8 times 40. I can use basic facts and say 8 times 4, well that's 32. And then I'm going to add my 0 down as a placeholder in my 1's place. So 8 times 40 is 320. I'm going to place this partial product underneath the 40 inside the box for 8 times 40. Now I'm going to multiply my 8 times 3, which is 24. So that partial product is going to go in the box underneath the 3 for 8 times 3. Now I have my partial products filled in, and now I just need to add them. Now, as you can see, I've done the addition for you here. 320 plus 24 is 344. These partial products added up to get my final product of 344. Now, I want you to make sure that you have this box model down as well as the expanded form work underneath problem number two. Now, let's look at number three. Number three says 6 times 532. So I have a one-digit number times a three-digit number. So my factors are getting a little larger. So I know that I need to use the break apart method and expanded form to solve this problem. So I'm going to break up the 532 into a 500 plus a 30 plus a 2. And I'm using the place value method to do that. Now I'm ready to draw my box model and I'm going to multiply this 6 times each of these place values. So first let me go ahead and draw my box model. I'm going to have a large rectangle. I'm making mine a little bit bigger because I have three place values now. 
Now my six is the digit that I'm multiplying each of the place values by, so my six goes down the side. Now I'm going to draw my 500. Now 500 is a large number, so I'm going to make this rectangle a little bit larger. And 500 goes up top. Now I'm going to make the rectangle for my 30, which is smaller than 500. And I'm going to place the 30 on top of this rectangle. And then this last box is for my 2, which is my smallest value. Now I have my box model all filled up and ready, and now I can start my multiplication. Okay, as you can see, I have our multiplication problems here, and now I can find the partial products. So I can do 6 times 500. 6 times 5 is 30 plus my two zeros for my placeholders, which gives me 3,000. 3,000 goes inside the box for six times 500. That's my first partial product. Now I'm going to multiply six times three, which is 18, plus the zero in the ones place, which gives me 180. That goes into the box for six times 30 underneath the 30. And now I can do 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12. So that can give me my answer for 12, and that's going to go into the box for 6 times 2. Now that I have all my partial products filled in, I can go ahead and add them. I did the addition here for you. I did 3,000 plus 180 plus 12. Those partial products added up give me my final product of 3,192. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down for my answer. Boys and girls, I want you to make sure that you have the work done for this problem as well, underneath number 3. Now we're going to skip number four. So I would like you to circle number four and write the word skip underneath it for me. All right, let's look at number five. Five says four times 2,371. Oh boy, we are multiplying our single digit by a number that has four place values in it. So I already know what you're thinking. Our box model is going to have four rectangles inside. So let's go ahead and break apart this 2,371. Now this 2 is worth 2,000. I'm going to go ahead and draw it down here. 2,000 plus this 3 is worth 300. The 7 is worth 70. And the 1 is in the 1's place, so it's only worth 1. Now we can go ahead and draw our model. Okay, here's our model. Go ahead and draw the model with me. Now notice that I'm multiplying by the single digit 4, so I only have one row of rectangles, but I have four place values. So I had to make sure I had my boxes inside that big rectangle that represent the each place value. And notice that I tried to make them the same size as I would think they would. Now 2,000 is a big number, so the, it gets a bigger box. 300 is a little bit smaller, and then 70 is next, and then 1 is the smallest value. So now that we have our box model ready, we're going to go ahead and multiply. So our first multiplication problem is 4 times 2,000. Now I have 4 times 2, well that is 8, plus my 3 zeros, which gives me 8,000. That 8,000 goes inside the box model underneath the 2,000. Next I need to multiply my 4 times 300. 4 times 3 is 12 plus the two zeros for the placeholders, which gives me 1,200. Bring down your plus sign, write your 1,200 inside the box under the 300. Next, I need to multiply my four times 70. Four times seven is 28, 
plus the zero gives me 280. So I'm going to write 280 in my box underneath my 70. My last multiplication problem that I need to make is multiplying the 4 times the 1. So I have 4 times 1. Well, that gives me 4. So I'm just going to bring down my 4 and I'm going to write it in the box underneath the 1. So now I've done all of the multiplication. Now I have partial products left, don't I? So these partial products need to be added. You are correct. Once I add my partial products, I will have my final product. Okay, I did the addition right here, and as you can see, I made sure to line up each of my place values in the correct spot. When I add 8,000 plus 1,200 plus 280 plus 4, my final product is 9,484. So that is the product of 4 times 2,371. It's 9,484. 84. Boys and girls, I hope that you have all of this work underneath problem number five. Now we are going to circle number six. And when you do your homework problems tonight, you're going to come back and work on number six as well. So go ahead and circle number six. Now let's look at number seven. We're going to circle number seven and we're going to write the word skip and we'll look at it tomorrow in class. So go ahead on number seven, write the word skip. Let's jump to our problem solving question number eight. There are 5,280 feet in one mile. Hannah likes to walk five miles each week for exercise. How many feet does Hannah walk each week? Well, we know that there are 5,280 feet in a mile, and Hannah likes to walk five miles each week for exercise. They want us to find out how many feet does Hannah walk each week. Well, this is going to be a multiplication problem, and we are going to multiply five miles times 5,280 feet. Now we have a one digit number multiplied by a four digit number. So we're gonna go ahead and draw our box model. Boys and girls, I want you to see if you can pause the video and start drawing the box model and get it ready to multiply. So pause the video and press play when you have your box model ready. Okay, here's our box model. We know that we are multiplying by our single digit five and we needed a rectangle for 5,000, then we needed one for 200, five times 80, and five times zero. So let's go ahead and start our multiplication. Okay, boys and girls, as you can see, I've written down my expanded form here for my multiplication. I know that five times 5,000 is going to give me 25,000. And I also know that 5 times 200 gives me 1,000. And 5 times 80 gives me 400. And 5 times 0 gives me 0. Now we have all of our partial products filled in. Now we are ready to add. Okay, I've done the addition here for you. We know that 25,000 plus 1,000 plus 400 plus zero, that gives us the final product of 26,400. So how many feet does Hannah walk each week? 26,400 feet. All right, kiddos, tonight's homework is on page 34, numbers one through six. And don't forget to go back and answer the one that we circled and page 33 as well. Don't forget on page 34 to let me know how you feel about this lesson. Let me know if you feel like you're a novice, level one, an apprentice, which is level two, a practitioner, level three, or an expert level four. Write this at the bottom of page 34 in your Go Math book. Good luck on your homework tonight and I know that none of you will be making these faces tomorrow because you have watched your video and you are prepared. Have a good night. Bye.